Ford Mustang 4.0 liter V6 sock engine 2005 to 2009 engine removal okay first thing I've done here is uh, pull, put the vehicle on the jack stands all the way around those are just regular jack stands I've got them on the uh, unibody there on the frame rails going underneath the car here there's the oil pan of the engine as a frame of reference coming up here to the exhaust manifold connection there's a nut here spray it with penetrating oil and on the direct other side of that up there same thing and come over here same thing right up in there too since I'm underneath the car I'm just gonna tell you what to do and do it off camera but when I get to the top of the car I'll show you step by step and while you're down here go ahead and take the uh, lower bell housing bolts off right here they do appear to be 13 millimeter heads another one and it appears there should be one here too <laughs> you might want to disconnect the oxygen sensors the upstream ones just in case when you pull the engine off the exhaust might drop down and put a lot of tension on the wire so you don't want that and lastly the starter is held on with two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here on the bottom and complete opposite and I'm touching it right there. Loosen those and slide the starter out of the way. I am gonna have to hit up each of these nuts with uh, some heat here. Heat up the nuts so that it can break loose from the rust bond. And you can also use this torch while you're down here on the ground to get any insects that are crawling all over you. Okay. Well, I just broke my $200 ratchet here just uh, stripped out. Back up top here, we'll go ahead and take this cover off the top of the radiator. I do have a cat claw. You can also use a flathead screwdriver if you have to, but I'm going to go ahead and release the push pins this way. Kind of like that. That's out of the way now. Again, I don't think you're going to have to pull the radiator out. Um, I I'm going to because I want to replace it just because it's 20 years old, so. And it does help with uh, clearance on pulling the engine out. Next, I'm going to go hey it and pull this uh, cold air intake off. If you have the factory intake, it's going to be similar, but I'm sorry. It's um, not going to be exactly the same as this. Oh my goodness. Overflow hose. Eight millimeter, eight millimeter, got this out of the way. Let's get the strut tower brace off of here, shall we? <sighs> Easier with two hands. Stick these back on here for now. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get this drive belt off of here, because my goal, in theory, is to take the AC compressor off and leave it in the car, so I don't have to purge all that later. <laughs> this belt is in good condition, so I want to stick it somewhere safe for reusal. I know that's kind of cheap of me, but uh, trust me, I'm still going to lose a couple grand on this car, guaranteed. It happens every time. Oh, before I forget, let's get this uh, upper radiator hose off, shall we? Come on, come on. Come on. Ah, oh, I'm getting writer's cramp. Got a hose stuck on here. Let me show you a little something an old man taught me. I'm just kidding. It was a younger guy. Um, but uh, If you're thinking, what the heck, I know that. Everybody knows that. I'm sorry. I'll just keep going here. Before I start tearing into here too much, I am going to go ahead and take this shroud and radiator out of the way. Open things up a little bit. Plus, when I take these power steering lines off, it's going to want to drizzle on these uh, coolant hoses. So if those are out of the way, less stuff to get messed up. Eight millimeters holding this shroud on. Both sides. There's another one over here. If you can see right there, it's got one of those clamps on both sides. One of those retainers that you have to just kind of pull back on. Pull back on it with your thumb and pull up on uh, the saw uh, fan here. Don't forget to unplug the fan. Okay. Let's see if this comes out. Am I the only one that doesn't like reusing stuff like these 20-year-old hoses with like plastic 
plastic in them right right there like that 20 years old 150,000 miles I, it's like i want to replace every single thing that i take off the car just to make it more reliable but then i drive it for two months and then i sell it for a loss so all right i'm not enough enough of that are you guys the same way uh, let me know in the comments down below you, you like that you like how i'm trying to sneak in some algorithm boost there commenting so in theory now take these two brackets off that are holding the radiator on and it should come out there might be some hardware that's bolting the condenser to it that's how it goes i am replacing the radiator of course i already said that because that's one of the first things to go when a car's got a lot of age and miles on it and i don't want to be stranded on a two-hour road trip or something yeah if you look in the middle of the camera there it's uh the condenser's held on with eight millimeter bolts I believe it's going to be on all four corners top and bottom holy cow beware draining the coolant from the radiator doesn't mean the coolant is drained from the radiator i just got that off and oh my goodness all over my shirt and face <laughs> there she is boys i might have rubbed a hole in the condenser <laughs> if i wasn't gonna lose money before i definitely am now oh my well here's where i'm at though got a bunch of room opened up here here we are again, boys. This whole bracket here that holds this uh, power steering pump and AC compressor on, it's held on with three 15 millimeter bolts. One right here, one right here, and then a nut down in here, and then the whole thing kind of comes loose. All the AC lines and power steering lines do have flex in them, so guess what? Chicken anus. There it is, right there. Holy feces. It's almost getting close to coming out. What? Already? After a few minutes of the video? All right, so at this point in time, it looks like this harness will come out with the PCM attached to it. And then I can kind of swap everything over once it's the engine's out. Um, and it looks like 10 millimeter bolt here and right here, and that'll come out and come out with the engine. There are some harness retainers to pop off. And I did pop off this, uh, off the uh, alternator here for some reason. I do need to remove these two clamps and slide these uh, heater hoses off of here. I got this uh, fuel line disconnected. It's a, you kind of pop that side over like that and then uh, squeeze in and push down. Uh, it'll look, look like that when it's released. All right, boys, here's where I'm at now. I do have the engine crane set up here. I have it jacked all the way up to make sure that it would get the engine over the bumper here. With it being on jack stands, it's a little higher than usual, so I believe that'll be fine there. I do have the bottom of the transmission supported by a jack. Right there. <laughs> It is an ATV jack, but you can use a regular jack to support the bottom of the transmission like that. I used the ATV one because it has more surface area that can support it, because I'm going to be lowering the transmission down to do the shifter bushings on it. Anyway, anyway without further interruption, I'm going to go ahead and lower this down and see where in the world I'm going to attach it to this engine here. Okay. Uh-oh. Yo tengo un problemo. It won't reach. Hmm, maybe I need a bigger crane. <laughs> think I'm gonna have to take the bumper off to get more clearance into there. So let's remove the front bumper, shall we? Remove these three screws on each side. One, two, and three. They appear to be seven millimeter. If you go on the inside here, right here, there's two 10 millimeter nuts, one and two, up in there on both sides and literally that's all there is to it <laughs> holy cow that was an easy bumper to get off just don't forget to hit the wires off for the uh lights there i am just stunned that this is the factory wiring for these this pony package headlights on the grill i am stunned there's no way <laughs> now would be a good opportunity to get some coil cleaner like you would get for an ac unit and just spray it all over the front of the uh, condenser here let it sit and then spray water from a garden hose from the inside out to clean off the condenser. This thing's in rough shape, my man. What? No leaks. <laughs> my man, it still doesn't reach. Let's pull a headlight out and see if we can get in it from an angle. Okay. That was easy. Take them both out. I want to restore this one. There's two screws on the bottom. One, two, one on the top. Is that it? I thought there was another. Oh yeah, I took that one off on the other side. Do not take that off. You don't have to. It's for the fender. Three screws. Got your eye. Got your eye. You can't make this up. Now it's hitting the jack that's holding the transmission up. 
coming in from the right side did it here. <laughs> All right, that, that'll be good. Don't forget to take the motor mount bolts off on each side. Here's what I've got going on here. I've got the uh, 15 millimeter bolt that holds that bracket on for this ignition coil taken out. I found a bolt that's longer. I ran it in there with the chain inside the bolt. By the way, that bolt is a pinch bolt from a Focus, so just so you know. And on this side, I have the alternator cover taken off and uh, looped into there. Stupid train. It's loud. So now, without, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pump up the jack and try to rip this uh, bastard on out of here. Okay. Oh, if I didn't say already, I've got the chain underneath the bracket there for the coil, not on the outside. It'll pinch everything up. The other engine mount won't lift off, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these 15 millimeter bolts off, holding these uh, mount, br mount brackets onto the uh, engine here. Take these off. <gasps> All right, I think I broke the bond between the engine and trans. Yes, sir. Let's check the other side. Kind of looks that way there. It does appear that I need to find a better spot to grab the chain on there. Because the engine's kind of like that. Or get a load leveler. It's kind of been working the jack back a little bit. Crane, excuse me. And um, kind of just jolting back. And it completely separated from the transmission. You want to see? You want to see? There we go. You don't want to pinch all this crap up in here. Careful. That's a big old son of a gun. Don't slip in the fluid. Slip resistant shoes. No, no, it's, they're not. Hold on there, sport. Got some of them there wires hooked on the back. Gotta pop them wires off of there. Don't forget this uh, EVAP line here. It hooks up right there. And don't forget to pop the brake booster vacuum line off of here because that's connected to the intake <gasps> uh oh don't break it grab the engine with both hands and just pulled forward a little bit slid the jack out of the way now I can uh, jack it up some more keep an eye on stuff make sure it doesn't pull on some wires or nothing don't forget that uh, ground that goes right there it's kind of like that ribbon strap right here Looks like I'm going to have to go underneath and pull the trans harness connectors off. By the way, guys, if you have an automatic, after you take the starter out, turn the engine over clockwise, find a um, torque converter nut, take it off, rotate it over 90 degrees. There's a total of four torque converter nuts, but uh, this is a manual, so. All right, there's a trans harness. On the manual, it's just two connectors, a retainer, and then the O2. There you go. And it does appear this engine's going to come out with the PCM harness attached to it here, so. Um, yeah, just follow it up comes with this uh, ground right here and then there's uh, some retainers here looks like it goes into the fuse box I'll figure it out later jacking her up and yes I do still have the hood on I'm just gonna pull the engine forward as I raise it up she's getting there make sure no more wires or anything catching well bent up the separator plate yahoo careful with that <laughs> Oh, uh, I was just kidding about taking the PCM harness and all that off with the engine. So, um, yeah, you just follow the harness up down in here. Take that bolt off. And that'll come off with it. Detach the harness from here. Got a ground right here. Then after that, this whole harness will sling out of the way. That is a tight fit on that hood there. I scratched it right there. Good thing I've got touch-up paint because I, I won't be able to see that anyway. That is one messed up separator plate, my guy. If you have an automatic, you definitely don't want to replace it because it's going to scrape the torque converter. Ask me how I know. Oh my goodness. I'm going to need to replace it too. I mean, that's terrible. It's dreadful. <laughs> don't hit the wires like I did. All right. I'm going to push this guy back. Uh, that harness is definitely still attached that goes into the fuse panel. All right, the only option I see here is to go through here and disconnect everything off the engine and drape it off. That does go in and connect to all the injectors and all the little things in there like that. So take your time and follow the harness around. I don't know, I've seen all the engines for sale and they had the harness on it still. So I guess that means they just sliced it off right here and it was a junkyard pole. And done. All I did was follow the harness up through there and disconnect everything one by one and slide it out from under there. I will say 
it would be easier to pull the intake manifold off and coil pack and un uh, disconnect everything in vehicle. That's what I'm going to do when I go back in with the next engine. Is um, I'm going to take the intake manifold off of that engine and uh, have all this kind of draped over maybe on the windshield or something. And uh, then once the engine's bolted into the car, I'm going to start connecting everything up because uh, that wasn't uh, very fun there. It wasn't the end of the world, but, you know, I got it off. But uh, that's how it's done, I guess. Uh, there you go. <laughs> engine's out. If you want to take the intake manifold off, let me show you. Kind of looks like it's just held in with some torque screws. See, kind of down in there. Series of them there. Another one right there. And if you look up top, there's a direct line of sight on each one. And then you just follow them uh, along here. Sorry about that. There's another one there. Another one down in there. There's another one, so on. And of course, you take all the wires and stuff off of it, and it'll come out. All right, boys. Hope you like it. Stay tuned next week where I uh, tear this thing down and see how bad it is and uh, show you on camera. Probably just pull the heads off. I might pull the might pull the connecting rods out. I mean, if the engine's just destroyed or, you know, I'm just, I'll take it all the way apart. So, all right. Thanks for watching.